Welcome to lesson 12. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about names. Now you can also follow along with the course textbook. We're going to be going into chapter four. So there's an old joke that goes, the two hardest problems in computer science are naming things, cache invalidation, and off by one errors. Classic joke, uh, but it does contain a kernel of truth. It's hard to come up with good names. These are formally called identifiers. It's hard to come up with good identifiers for variables, functions, classes, and anything else in programming. You know, concise, descriptive names are really important for your program's readability, but often that's easier said than done. Now, if you were moving to a new house and you labeled all of your moving boxes as stuff, that would be fairly concise, but it's not really descriptive. Uh, a descriptive name for a programming book might be invent your own computer games with Python, but that's not very concise. So unless you're writing throwaway code that you don't intend to maintain after you run the program once, you should put some thought into selecting good names in your program. If you just use A, B, and C for variable names, your future self is going to have to expend unnecessary effort to remember what these variables are actually used for. Now, names are a subjective choice that you have to make. Uh, an automated formatting tool like Black, described in the previous lessons, that can't decide what you should name your variables. So this and the next few lessons are going to give you some guidelines to help you choose suitable names and avoid poor ones. And as always, these guidelines aren't written in stone. Use your judgment to decide when to apply them. Now before I dive into this, I want to go into metasyntactic variable names. So we commonly use a metasyntactic variable name in tutorials or code snippets when we need just a generic variable name for our example. And in Python, we often use the names spam, eggs, bacon, uh, and ham in our code examples. And this is just a Python thing. It's because it comes from the Monty Python spam sketch. However, in other programming languages, there's also foo and bar, which are common metasyntactic variable names. Uh, this comes from the acronym foobar, which is a World War II army slang uh, that stands for messed up beyond all recognition. Now these are good for code snippets, but you don't want to use metasyntactic variable names in actual real-world code. All right, let's first talk about co uh, casing style. This is important to cover because Python identifiers are case sensitive. A variable such as capital spam is going to be different from lowercase spam. These are two different variables with two different values in them. And that's because identifiers in Python are case sensitive. And also, identifiers can't contain white space, such as spaces. So if we have multiple words in our identifier, we have to figure out some sort of style to combine them together. The first of these are snake case. And this separates words with an underscore character. So it looks like a flat snake in between each word. This case often implies that all letters are lowercase, although you can have uppercase uh, snake case. Now that's often used for constant variables. Uh, the next one is camel case, and this is when you have the first word, uh, the first letter of every word after the first word capitalized right here. So the uppercase letters sort of look like the humps of a camel if you have several words in, a, in one identifier. Now in camel case, the first letter is often lowercase. If we put it in uppercase, we usually call that Pascal case. And this is named after the Pascal or Pascal programming language. But we're often deciding between using either snake case or camel case in our Python code. Either is fine to use as long as your project consistently uses one or the other and not both. Now, Python has a document called PEP8, which is the style guide for Python code. Most people follow most of the recommendations in this document, but I'm going to go over a few good ones as far as having good naming conventions to follow. So the first one of that is all the letters in your identifiers should be ASCII letters. That is to say, they are uppercase and lowercase English letters that don't have accent marks. Now, rather unfortunate for non-English speakers, the programming world is very American and English-centric. 
So while Python would completely allow you to have characters with accent marks, so we could write code such as this, this would be a completely valid uh, variable name in Python. The convention is to use letters without accents. Similarly, we could even have identifiers that don't use English letters. This is also completely valid Python code, but the standard is to use English characters since those are the ones that can be typed from a QWERTY keyboard. Next, modules should have short, all lowercase names. Now you might have noticed this if you're running an import statement and importing a module such as random or math or sys. Notice that these modules all have lowercase names and no divider between the words. I'll give you an example of what I mean here. Now let's say we create a module that we want to call hello world. I could name this as hello world.py. And if we want to import this module, we have to run import hello world with a capital H and capital W. And that follows the name of the .py file. If we tried to do this with just lowercase letters, Python would not be able to find it. So the convention is to always have your module names always be in lowercase letters. And another note, we can also name files with dashes, such as hello-world.py. However, it's actually impossible to import these modules because a dash character is not considered a valid part of an identifier. You can have underlines, but not dashes. This actually looks like you're trying to import a module called hello, and then you have the minus operator followed by some other identifier right here. And so Python's going to give you a syntax error. So don't name your Python modules with a dash in the file name. Next, uh, class names should be written in Pascal case. If we're creating a new class, we should not have it in normal camel case, but instead we should always have it begin with a capital letter. This is just a convention for Python classes. Also, if we have constant variables, uh, these are variables whose values are never supposed to change. We should put them in uppercase snake case. So if I had days in a week and I'm going to assign this value 7 and this variable never actually changes its value, it's always going to be 7, then this is a constant variable, as odd as that sounds, and it should be in uppercase snake case. Now conversely, functions, methods, and variable identifiers should be written in lowercase snake case. So if we have some sort of uh, a variable named, I don't know, current inventory status. The PEP8 document says we should use lowercase snake case. Now this is a part where I disagree. I much prefer using camel case here. So I would write this like this with a capital I and capital S. That's just because I don't like typing underscore characters. But that's fine. If we go ahead and look at PEP8 itself, the first section in this document reminds us that we don't have to slavishly adhere to this document and everything in it. It's more important just to be consistent within your own projects. So while I like to use camel case in my own code, uh, if you're working on a project and everything is already done in, say, snake case, go ahead and continue to use snake case. You don't want to have both of these. You don't want to have both of these styles in the same file or code project. Uh, next, the first argument for methods should always be named self in lowercase. 
So let's create a uh, class. I'm just going to name it um, I don't know, generic class. And we'll often create an init method for these. So this is a method inside of a class. And we always begin this with a lowercase self. Now, technically, we could make this any name at all. We could make this uppercase. We could make this foobar. But the convention in Python is to always name this lowercase self. And that leads us to the next one. The first argument for class methods should always be named CLS in lowercase. So just as the first argument being named self indicates that this is a method, if we create a class method, um, I'll just call this generic class method, this should always have CLS. Even though we can technically name this uh, argument anything we want, CLS for class is the standard. And of course, class methods would always begin with the class method decorator. If you don't know about this, we'll cover this later in this course when we go into object-oriented programming in Python. But just know, for methods, always name it self. And for class methods, always name it CLS for class, even though you can technically give these any name you want. And next, private attributes in classes should always begin with an underscore. Now, Python doesn't have uh, public and private members. Technically, everything in Python will always be public. But if you want to simply, if you want to note that a variable it should be private and not modified by any code outside of the class, you can make it begin with an underscore character. Just like when we had constant variables, uh, there's nothing that actually enforces this being constant. We could always add code later on that uh, changes this to whatever we want, but having it in all caps like this marks this as constant. The same thing applies here, having this be uh, have an underscore in front marks this as being private, even though the language doesn't enforce public and private uh, attributes. Now in the next lesson, we're going to continue talking about understandable names and readable code by going into how long our, our variable names should be.